a running back would be the first one to look at here. One Riley Wormley out of South Lake, Texas at 59170. 39th rated player at his position in the country. Top 70 player in the state of Texas, Tim. Yeah, well, he had a pre-existing um, relationship going back with Anthony Jones back to his time at, at, at Texas. But here's the thing we got to say, guys. I mean, don't get me wrong. You know, some of the best running backs of all time are USC. Just statistically, in the top 15, uh, there's like at least five guys from Texas. Um but this running back room now is just getting insanely deep with just Texas backs. Like literally, I'm beginning to wonder if all we do is um, recruit Texas backs. But it, it, he's a little bit different. It seems like a guy, you know, that's that's gonna come in. Uh, he's got this um, kind of a smaller back. You know, uh, it, lately they've been getting the bigger backs, and if they are getting a back that's not quite six foot one, six foot, it's a guy that's usually pretty stout. Uh, and and uh, Matt, I mean, we did. Talk about Riley Wormley. Do you have any thoughts on him? Uh, you know, my main thought is not so much about Wormley specifically, like, you know, and, you know, in, in general, not just for Wormley, but for any recruit, like I don't do the deep dives into their high school histories. You know, I, I have uh, too, too many things going on uh, at Trojans Wire and, and elsewhere, but like I, I try to see the big picture. And the, to me, the big picture is, like if you're looking for validation, if you're looking for signs of, you know, confirmation of Lincoln Riley's shift in philosophy, more defense, more running the ball, more physicality, you know, getting bigger, thicker uh, on the lines, you know, bringing in another running back, just that's that's the validation that's going to be a, a little bit less of a of a Ferrari and more of a of a Ford pickup truck in terms of, you know, adjusting to the Big Ten being able to win, you know, those uh, slobber knocker 20 to 13 games in the cold and the wind and the rain, uh, you know, it, like being able to play uh, one of those 11 a.m. Uh, brunch football games at Kinnick uh, or, or Purdue, uh, you know, on a foggy, soggy morning when like no one wants to be up at that hour from the West Coast. And but we're going to ram the ball between the tackles. And, you know, to do this, you need depth like you and USC has not used a lot of bodies at running back either of the last two years. You had Travis die in 2022 until he got hurt. And then it was basically Austin Jones uh, carrying the load when, when die got hurt. And then last year it was Marshawn Lloyd. And you did not see a lot of guys getting a lot of touches. It was not equally spread around. It was pretty much a one a and then maybe a 1B as an occasional change of pace. But it was basically a lead running back getting the vast majority of carries. That has to change in the Big Ten. You know, in order to be able to run the ball consistently, you need to be giving different guys uh, lots of carries. You need to be spreading the wealth around so that guys are fresh, so that no one guy is taking too many hits. That's the significance of the Riley Wormley recruitment for me and, and really on, on a broader level any running back added to the fold it's it's bolstering that notion of you know it takes a village now in the running back room we're getting away from the the, the one meal ticket and we're going to a a, a more community model it's kind of like the defensive side of the ball you know you're going to have multiple you're going to have co-coordinators and you're going to have you know matt Entz and doug belk and Taylor Mays all, you know, collaborating on the game plan. Lincoln Riley is embracing uh, a more communal style of living. And part of this is the running back room, giving lots of touches to lots of guys so that guys are staying fresh. Uh, no, no one person is taking too many bullets. You know, you're going to, you're going to be distributing the workloads that you have three, four guys who are consistently able-bodied through the entirety of a Big Ten season, that that's really the big picture here at USC with the running back room. Matai Tagawai is the highest rated of the three committed over the weekend from San Clemente, California, listed as a safety at, safety at 6'4", 190, 71st uh, rated player nationally. So big commit there. Top 10 rated player at his position. Number three rated player, Tim, in the state of California. Yeah, a big guy. Kind of like you want to think he's almost like a, um, 
He's, he's kind of like that Eric Gentry. Eric Gentry is obviously a little bit taller than him, but this you talk about a big, tall, rangy linebacker. Not the biggest guy, so probably uh, will be playing linebacker though. But that's what's so interesting about him. The guy is so athletic and freakish. I mean, he he can drop back. So if you had him at that will position, right, he'd be able to drop back into coverage uh, prototypically. Or in Sam, when they pulled that nickel off and they had the Sam linebacker in Dantlin's system, he's that kind of guy that's going to be able to get you out on the edge, but also, again, drop back and 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 cover. Um, I like you know, the fact that they just keep going after athletes, right? Dantlin said in the very beginning, he wants versatile players. This is this is this is what you talk about when you say versatile. I mean, I, he's his size. I mean, who knows? Maybe one day he could put on enough size to move to like a, a, a an end position. I don't I don't know. Not not in this defense, but it does look like he's going to be something on the outside as a linebacker. Um, I would like to believe that he can be that kind of guy that just causes the quarterbacks to have to change the trajectory of their throws, stepping back into passing lanes, uh, and, and just really quick. This guy is fast. And big, so just another huge pickup. They just keep lining up these top 100 players nationally on the defensive side of the ball. Once again, what Matt opened up with, Lincoln Riley said, everything we're going to do here is to get this defense in line. I think people talk too much crap about Riley's defense, and now he really took that to heart and everything he's doing. And we look at also, remember, we had the big news about how they're opening up NIL. We talked about that last week on both shows. NIL's opened up now, so... I'm not sure exactly what that plays into as far as a lot of these commitments, but now you have the situation where USC has its NIL collective program going at full speed, um, and I don't see any of these defensive studs slowing down anytime soon. My uh, uh, point to add, uh, you know, is with, with, with Tagawai is it's a California recruit, and and if if you look at the big board here, the the, the four names that you see. You see two California products. You see a Florida product. You see a Texas product. Of course, you know USC went into Georgia for uh, Justice Terry and and uh, and other uh, commitments as well. So you're seeing USC doing really really well, uh, you know, in SEC country and in California. So that's a really nice balance. I mean, also Texas. I guess we need to call Texas SEC country yeah. now. I feel yep. so wrong. Uh, but but you know, so there's a nice balance of you know keeping Cal California products at home and also going into SEC locales and that's really good but now here's kind of the word of caution or or perhaps just me kind of you know defaulting into my bad cop tendencies I need to get some offensive linemen you know like that that's the position group we're not seeing enough of need need to beef up there and we need to go into these big 10 uh, states and get some get some dudes uh, up front you know, like that seems to be the missing piece of the puzzle with this 2025 recruiting class. Really good in Cali, really good in, in uh, Georgia and Florida, some some wins in Texas as well. So in Sunbelt states, but I'd like to see some Midwest recruiting wins and I'd like to see some offensive lineman recruiting wins. That, that's that's what needs to come into the picture here for this 2025 class, which, as Tim Prangley wrote at Trojans Wire, uh, earlier today, ranked number three in the on three uh, rankings, number nine in two four seven because they both, you know, they they do the numbers uh, and have a different formula. But uh, number three in on three and really high in terms of per player uh, rating. So lots of good stuff. But of course, there are some specific areas where you're seeing well, there's still uh, some undiscovered frontiers uh, that USC needs to be able to enter into. They actually they've they've moved up with the latest commits. They moved up to number seven in the two four seven composite. Um, and, and and we want to say that that so just so you guys out there wondering why the big disparity. It's not just in the players, right? There's two ranking systems, but also the way they rank the classes. Uh, on three does it to where you have like they look at the average number of recruits that have committed to the schools, and they set to say let's say at four or five or whatever six, whatever it is. And then they take those top six players in each class. So you have a situation I wrote about where you have Notre Dame, it's the number one class, but USC's uh, like overall player ranking is like 94 point something or whatever. You got Ohio State at 96, I think. And uh, then you have uh, Notre Dame, not bad, but they're like, nine, they, have 17, they have 17 commitments. SC has seven. 
And so they have 17 commitments and uh, their average uh, player ranking is like 90 point something. So we go into all the numbers. You guys, the point, I mean, really, are we going down to the decimal point stuff? The fact of the matter is, is that uh, one takes every pretty much everybody and kind of lumps them together. So you, you have 17 guys in your class. He's going to move you up higher on three. I like it because early on, you know, if you don't have a bunch of three stars and, and lower ranked guys, you can't plug it up for that ranking system. It kind of give you a better snapshot of the quality of the class. I think at on three, we're looking at the top, uh, top 10. Take Hawaii with 59 tackles in his junior season, eight tackles for loss, seven sacks, seven hurries. Also forced, uh, three passes batted at the line by Tagawai. So there's the safety that came in there. And then we go to the cornerback who is Tristan Castro, 6'1", 160, Upland, California. He's 34th rated at his position, according to 247 Sports, 31st rated in the state of California. And he committed today. Yeah, this, this guy's your cover corner. This guy will blanket you. Uh, he's got 11 interceptions over the past two years. Um, just, uh, I, I think I saw USC, uh, USCJ, I think he posted something about the fact that he just won a camp, the Under Armour camp. He won the MVP of that camp. Uh, so I'm sure you're going to see his numbers. He's, he's rated as a three-star right now, the 34 uh, best corner in, in, by 247. I'm, I'm just thinking those numbers are going to uh, improve uh, with just his play. Um, again, I think I was just quoting some information. I, did, I don't, and I'm, the, the scout that I was quoting was Greg Biggins, who really knows his stuff over 247, just saying this guy is a lockdown cover corner. So I'm going to go with that evaluation over star rankings and, and early on. You know, you guys just going off his junior year, he has a whole senior year and a bunch of camps are sure to go to improve that stock. And, and the more, anything, I, I, more than anything, I'm going to, you know, <laughs> I caught myself doing that. More than anything, I'm just going to listen to Doug Belk. If Doug Belk wants this guy, right, if, if he wants to go after him, then th believe me, it's someone that we, if he wants to give, take an offer, uh, offer this guy and take a commitment from a kid like this, this early in this, in the uh, year, I'm going to go with Doug Belk and trust his evaluation over pretty much 247 on three rivals, ESPN, whoever you want to look at. It's, that's really what you want to be looking at. Those are 12 career interceptions from Castro, including 14 passes defensed. He had 99 tackles as a sophomore playing at cornerback. So I don't know what that says about his defense. It says yeah. a lot about his personal defense, but uh, the team uh, that backed off to 58 total tackles uh, the next season. I stand corrected. That's a career total of 99. He did, though, have 58 tackles at cornerback in his sophomore season and then 36 this past year got into the backfield a few times for some sacks and tackles for loss as well trojan conquest yeah, live still right heavy heavy. absolutely trojan conquest live everyone right here at the voice of college football we're here on a tuesday because of the women's game on monday we'll be back next monday at uh well we may want to rethink that one i believe we've got the men's national championship game correct yeah yeah so that's we'll right and that, that one for next and, and 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 we all know the tip time is always 9 21 eastern time that's regular they regularly put it right then instead of doing it at 8 30 which would be you know the same thing to do but you know i've been beating that drum for a decade without any results so So stay tuned. That's the big reason, folks, why you subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for the notifications. That way you know when we go live. And we will also be posting uh, a notification to let you know on the community page when we are going to go live and accommodate the men's national championship game. But then after that, it will be back to every Monday night, 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific. All right. I was all geared up for these uh, commitment breakdowns. And after that, I uh, don't have any more of a rundown. Where do we stand uh, elsewhere? Spring ball, Tim. When's well, the last time you were able to get out there? I was not there. There was another 5.30 a.m. Um, 5.30 a.m. practice this morning. Uh, and I was going to go out to, to there to take pictures. 
But unfortunately, until I get a better lens, you guys, let's put it this way. Um, the night, the, the, the low shots with like, you know, with, I can't set my aperture low enough to zoom in. Cause you remember we're, we don't get to walk where we want. So if you want to see the linemen, they're 50, 60 yards that way. So realistically, um, and the practices are, are, are pretty quick. I wasn't able to get out there this morning, but, uh, there, you know, we did, I will be there on Thursday for, uh, for practice. There's actually two 30, a more reasonable two 30 on Thursday. So I'll, I'll be out there uh, for those practices. One thing that, you know, is really important to note though, about these, uh, really, really early morning practices, like this is no accident, right? This is Lincoln Riley beginning to, you know, not just directly tell his players, but in also indirectly, just like, you need to be disciplined. You need to be able to wake up and be alert and be dialed in. Uh, this is Big Ten preparation. This is this is preparation for those 11 a.m. Central Time games, those 9 a.m. Pacific Time games. And and hey, Mark, like you know the deal. You remember Cal and Kevin Riley sleepwalking uh, to Maryland for a 9 a.m. game. You remember Kevin Hogan and Stanford. Just, you know, <laughs> with a total nothing burger in an 11 a.m. game at Northwestern uh, a decade ago. And, of course, you know, like Kevin Hogan, that was the golden era for Stanford football under David Shaw. Three Rose Bowls in four years. Stanford was running the show in the Pac-12, overtaking Chip Kelly in Oregon, but couldn't solve the body clock game uh, at Northwestern at Ryan Field. You know, it's sleepy time. So this is Lincoln Riley planting some seeds and getting guys into habits. He's thinking several months ahead. So like that, that's part of the storyline. Like this is not just, you know, a coach trying to instill discipline. This is big 10 preparation. It starts now. Lincoln Riley is already trying to get his guys into that body clock mode, that body clock uh, mindset. So that it is no accident that these he's loading up the early morning practices at USC. Yes. Christian McCaffrey and company were, unstoppable in the Rose Bowl a few months later against a better Iowa team, but taking on Northwestern, six points on the board for that 11 a.m. start uh, absolutely on in week one. Uh, we've got some interesting numbers to pass along ourselves. We've got uh, 220 people watching right now. We've got about 70 or 80 watching us on YouTube. Now that's fine. We have opened this up to Facebook, Instagram, Twitter as well. Uh, for uh, accommodating all of you, regardless of where you want to join us on social media. But just keep in mind, uh, for the comments and questions, you get to join us here on YouTube. But we are doing our best to make it a, uh, an easy watch or listen for all of you. So we appreciate uh, 220 on the line um, here at the Voice of College Football. That yeah, actually be interesting too. Also, I'm not sure if they can stream through that too. I know people on Twitter or X can go ahead and uh, leave comments as well. If you are if you are watching on one of the other platforms, I'm curious. Go ahead and drop us a comment. Uh, we will we will feature it. Love to see who's out there on the different platforms. We've been running pretty much on on Facebook. I mean on on um, on YouTube this entire time for what 96 episodes. So uh, it's about time we reached out to see what other communities out there. So uh, look for us. I'll, we're gonna I'll go to Facebook as well, Mark. See what we can do there as well. Trying to gather as, as many. Trojan fans together in one place as possible every Monday, usually on Monday nights. Obviously, today because of the of the uh, women of Troy playing last night, and then it appears next Monday because of the of the uh, championship game, we won't be going live. But you will be able to see us all throughout the summer. Um, we got a couple more weeks of practice here, as well as on the twentieth. There's going to be the spring game. I will have a lot of video, hopefully, and pictures from that game and news and and what I see on the sidelines. Uh, for all of you guys coming up in a couple of weeks. So please make sure you are subscribing. Uh, drop us a follow on Instagram or on Twitter. And then also, uh, if you could, go ahead and hit that subscribe button here at the Voice College Football on the YouTube channel. Just go, um, that way you know when we go live. Because just remember, we went, Matt and I went live that Saturday when all of a sudden we started pulling in uh, left, right, and center. Kids from the SEC flipping Justice Terry from Georgia we went live for phone calls. That's one of our shows we do on Friday night. We're going to have a call-in show where you can call in. We'll have the number. It's 888-99-RILEY, about as easy as you can get. You guys can call in. And, and basically, it's the only one that we know of. Uh, we were the first. We're probably not going to be the last. But we 
basically turn the show over to you guys and take your calls and uh, listen to what you want to talk about in USC. And you can pick Matt in my brain for about an hour to an hour and a half, as long as I can hold Matt on the show. <laughs> 